Hello to anyone watching this. I am ridiculously excited for the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, you know? It's going to be so nice to reunite with two of my favourites from the original Xbox. You know, I always loved playing those games, is demos, and nothing else. Yeah, I never actually played the full games, I only ever had access to the demos, but I am still just as hyped as everyone else for the collection. So today I just wanted to go through my memories playing these demos and explain why they stuck with me for so long. Uh, this isn't really going to be a technical breakdown of all the content in the demos or anything like that. This is basically just the memoirs of a seven year old version of me. So yeah, this is quite a nostalgic and personal topic for me. So I feel it's best to start by talking about how I actually got my hands on these demos. My first ever console was an original Xbox, which we didn't get it because me or anyone else in my family was actively interested in gaming. My mother just won it at a workplace raffle, so we just sort of made the most of it and kept buying games for it. But we also bought the DVD playback kit, which just gave us a really efficient way to watch films on the TV that we had the Xbox connected to. And some of my favourite films to watch were of course the Star Wars series. We had 3, 4, 5, 6 and an original trilogy bonus features disc. Uh, we never really got round to buying one or two which made them my favourites out of the series because they felt like a sort of rare treat to watch them on TV or something, but you know that's an entirely separate issue. Out of all of the DVDs that we did have, the ones that are relevant to this discussion are the Revenge of the Sith second disc and the original trilogy bonus features disc. Because when you start up those discs on an Xbox you get taken to a special menu where you get to pick between the normal contents of the discs or for the original trilogy bonus features disc a demo for Battlefront 1 and for the Revenge of the Sith second disc a demo of Battlefront 2. And like just the idea of that is still amazing to me. Like. I've always been a sucker for those little games you used to get on DVDs. So to have an actual, like, playable console experience baked into these DVDs is just mind-blowing, you know? It's the first major reason that I remember these demos so fondly. Just the fact that the only way that you can access them happened to be the only way that I was watching DVDs, it just made them feel special, like this was a unique thing for me to have access to. And despite the fact that I lost my Xbox to natural causes many years ago, I still feel melancholic that I don't have access to the demos anymore. Like if I'm ever in the mood to pop those discs into our current DVD player, it's mainly so that I can watch the trailers that they had for the Battlefront games and to look over the special screen that they had prompting you to pop the discs into an Xbox, you know? Like obviously a lot of these happy feelings are all down to nostalgia, but it's like they're still in my head, you know? That's all that really matters at the end of the day. But that's enough of my origin story for today. Let's get on with how much fun I had actually playing the demos. So even though I played the Battlefront 2 demo first because I had way more interest in the prequel trilogy and didn't find out about the Battlefront 1 demo until a bit later, I am going to be going through the demos in game release order because that just makes the most sense. Also, like I said, I don't have access to these demos anymore, so for any visual references I've nabbed screenshots from gameplay videos that I'll link below. So the first thing to talk about is of course the menu, which watching it back I of course get nostalgic for the fonts and the sound effects and all that fun stuff, but in terms of a more objective praise, the footage in the background is really cool because obviously the only thing you get to play in this demo is the Battle of Endor, so 
to actually see clips from the Battle of Endor just gets you really hyped up. But in terms of actually navigating the menus, I of course was too young to actually understand what most of the options meant, so I would just sort of click into them and come up at a dead end and just end up going straight to single player, which means that I probably could have had a better experience if I understood all of the different options in the options menu, but oh well. So going into the single player mode, the actual content that you get is what I now understand to be a 150 ticket conquest match, but back then I really just saw it as a battle, you know? But what's really cool about this match is that you get to pick between the Empire and the Rebels, meaning that you essentially get two levels rather than one, even though they're, you know, the same battle and everything. I'm pretty sure most of the time though I ended up picking the Empire, because obviously they get to use the big walkers to help them in battle and it just gave me a layer of security to know I was sort of above everything else just shooting below. But after picking a side and loading in, you get confronted by the main reason that I hope the Classic Collection uses the Xbox version of these games, the unit select scroll wheel. Like to me this is just a way cooler method of picking your unit rather than just a generic list in the PC version. Like getting to see all of the other types of trooper you can be, I just always really enjoyed that, you know? In terms of the unit that I picked, I'd often just go straight for the Stormtrooper because in the end it wouldn't normally matter because i just go straight for the Walker and that's not really affected by what class you choose. So yeah, from there I just had a very literal blast going around and picking off all the Rebels. I absolutely was not focused on the command posts, it was kind of intimidating just to sort of have to stand there and hope that nobody sees you so I just took a lot of comfort in sitting up in the vehicle. So I just keep shooting until the match eventually ended which I never really understood why it did back then. I don't think I understood how the ticket system worked but eventually it would just cut away to a different screen which uh, this is definitely a moment where my lack of reading comprehension as a seven year old has come back to haunt me, because while I do vividly remember the footage of the troopers stood there, I remember the word victory at the top said history, like oh, the history of battles, ooh, experience history. But from there you get to see the normal please buy our game screen and then get kicked back to the main menu. So while I always had a lot of fun playing with the Empire, I really didn't have as much fun playing as the Rebels. Even though they do have the best class in this demo, being the Vanguard, which I appreciated because they could, you know, make giant explosions with their gun. It's just when I actually loaded into the match, the entire nature of war just dawned on me in a sense. Because when I spawned in, I'd be stood there, in a place that I don't know, knowing that there is an entire army of people out to get me. Like, even now that's an utterly terrifying concept, like, I've always hated being chased, so knowing that that was the case in this giant forest with loads of places to hide, it was utterly terrifying. Like, all I could ever bring myself to do was climb up the platforms on the trees and just sort of hide up there and hope that nobody could find me. It didn't help that you're not able to run in this game, so I wouldn't even be able to get up the trees at the speed that I wanted to. And added to this early version's lighting and music and overall ambiance, it just felt so ominous. You know, this is like literally my version of playing Slenderman. It's a genuine horror experience to me. But in the end I still came back to it again and again and again because I just really enjoyed exploring this giant open area, you know, as long as I knew there weren't any enemy noises nearby I was always just happy to walk around the trees. Plus I knew that even if I was just sat on the sidelines the match would eventually end and I'd get to see the history screen again. 
So yeah, even if I wasn't exactly aware of what it was, I always knew there was something great about this game, you know, just getting to be in the Star Wars world and actively get to explore it, I just always wanted to have more of it, you know? Which, even though I never got either of the full games, the fact that I had demos for both of them made it still feel like a complete experience, you know? I was getting all that I possibly could out of the Battlefront games. So moving on to the second game's demo, this was the one that I spent a lot more time with for a variety of reasons. Something about this game just felt a lot grander than the first, which once again I can start explaining by using the main menu. Not only is the font and all of the sound effects way more iconic, like even now sometimes when I'm going through a game's menu, like this game's transition noises will just pop up in my head, like they're just that memorable to me. But getting to see battles from across the series in the background just made me want this game so much more. Like, I already had so much fun in the battles I get to have in this demo. Like, of course I want to have that much fun in Half or on the Tantive 4. Like, this is literally one of the best menus in all of gaming. Like, if they don't use this version of the menu in the classic collection, I genuinely don't think I'll enjoy it as much. But getting on to the main content of this demo, there are two levels this time instead of just one. Although instead of them being conquest matches, these are just the story levels, Coruscant to Desperate Rescue and Utapau Underground Ambush. But I of course didn't know that back then, you know, because of the titles having demo and teaser in the names, I thought these were just like vaguely scripted versions of the normal battles that you get in the game. But before I get into talking about each of these battles individually, there is something that I need to talk about that they both share, which is a timer. You can only play the ground level for 8 minutes and the space level for free, which Back then I didn't really think much of, you know, I thought fair enough, they only want to give you so much time on these levels, but knowing what I do about the games now, it doesn't really make that much sense. Watching people play the campaign, they normally breeze through these two levels, like there's no need for a timer at all, plus the fact that you only get so many troops and once you run out that's an automatic failure, you know. That's a timer in and of itself, so I don't know, it just feels completely unnecessary to have it in these demos. But that's just a hindsight thing. When I was a kid, I just saw this as 11 minutes of heaven either way, you know, I just sort of took it all at my own pace. So going through the levels, I'll start with the space teaser, as it's the one that I spent way less time on. So after loading in, we of course get to the unit selection screen, which as a kid I never understood why this battle had less units to pick from than the ground battle. Of course now I understand that you simply don't need the same variety when in space, but back then it was just slightly disappointing, especially because I really didn't like seeing the clone pilot's face meaning that I essentially only ever picked the Marine. And then when it came to picking a ship to pilot, I always tried to go for Anakin Starfighter, mainly just because it had R2-D2 on it, and I liked the idea of having him as a little buddy as I went round space. But no matter what ship I got into, I always enjoyed just getting out there and flying about. You know, you have a really nice open space to explore. It's always really fun and the first objective of attacking the droid's communication array was always quite easy, you know, just fly around it, keep shooting at it, and fish bash bosh, done. But the wheels did fall off when it came to the second objective. Like I said earlier, I really hate being chased and directly putting myself in front of enemies, so when the game says to fly into their hangar, land, get out of my ship and just sort of plod over and destroy some stuff 
inside of their hangar. Like, no thank you. Like, that was always just insurmountably terrifying for me. Like, the level basically ended there. You know, the most I ever did was land in their ship and just hop into the nearest droid ship that I could and fly around in that instead. Because that was, like, sort of cool. You know, that's their ship, so I'm going to also use that. Like I said, I just really enjoyed flying about. You know, I got all of the joy I needed to just doing that. Even though I really didn't like how the time limit was way less than the Utapau demo, I still savoured every second I got, you know? But once the time limit is up, you get instantaneously teleported to a battle result screen, which I obviously never ended up too high on. And then you get taken to the please buy our game screens, and then the demo just sort of resets. And I mean, any confusion about why the game had to completely reset itself was quickly relieved because it meant that I got to see the main menu again, you know? And using that menu we can move on to the Utapau demo, which is definitely the level out of both of these demos that I have the absolute most vivid memories of. So loading into the unit selection, I just love all of these guys so much. Like, out of the four playable sides in these games, the clones are definitely my favourite. When I was a kid, I didn't really understand why all of the units had different shaped helmets, because when I watched the movies, I thought, you know, everyone had the same design, but I still love them all regardless. I remember the engineer I used to call the Ram Head because his helmet sort of looked like it had the horns of a ram on it, to me at least. But the unit that I ended up picking more often than not was the Jet Trooper, mainly because it enabled me to just hide away from everything. I did normally get into more of the battle than with the space mission, mainly because I was surrounded by all of the boys, I felt a lot more comfortable taking over the first two command posts, but after I got access to Obi-Wan I normally didn't get much further because Hangar 10 is just quite a creepy place to me with all of the cold looking metal and stuff, and also the fact that General Grievous appears, it was way too daunting for me, just this unstoppable force of lightsabers, I just really couldn't handle it, so I'd normally end up just giving up there and running about. But just the whole idea of capturing command posts and having access to all of these different units and running about this really open map, it was just still so much fun to me. It's what I love the most about these demos, just the sense of freedom it still has with such a limited amount of gameplay. And even when I completely ignored the objectives, I still had a lot of fun, you know, just hanging around in the initial area that you spawn in. Although, to be fair, the amount of fun I had wasn't completely created by some of the intended mechanics of the game, because in that initial area I found some of my first ever glitches. Obviously you're going to have to take me at my word for what I'm about to explain, because Nobody's really gone out of their way to record all of the glitches in this demo, but I'll try my best to just explain what I mean with them. The first glitch is to do with the giant pit in the level, because when you jump into it normally it just takes a second or two for you to die and then you can just quickly respawn, but I found if you drop a grenade and let yourself get exploded off the edge you just sort of keep flipping and flying for like 10 to 15 seconds before dying and something about that was just always really entertaining for me. While on the subject of the grenades, I just wanted to quickly mention the special name that I gave to them. Because I often played on my Xbox in the morning before going to school, it would be around the time that I had a nice piece of toast with jam on it for breakfast. and. After eating that, seeing the grenades, I can't help but always call them like jam pips or jam seeds or whatever the little bits you see in jam are, like, it'll always be an association for me there. But moving on, the other glitch was way more exciting and it was the main reason that I always picked the Jet Trooper. Because he can obviously fly, you can use that to get on top of the roof of the hut that you spawn in and 
on that roof it's sort of attached to a cliff and if you simply run towards the cliff you can go into it like they forgot to put collision onto that cliff and because that cliff doesn't have a floor to it it meant I could just look down on all the fighting happening you know like I said about the Endor battle I enjoyed just hiding away so finding a glitch that lets me hide away it just felt you know completely and utterly safe like nothing was going to get me it was just a really nice feeling even though it's very obviously not the one that the game wants you to have but yeah just the way that I could either exploit the glitches or go for the objectives it was always so nice to have that freedom of choice you know even though it's definitely driven by nostalgia this Utapau level is genuinely one of my favorites in all of gaming and when I do get my hands on the classic collection I think the first thing that I'm going to do is just try and set it so that there's no AI or anything and just freely roam around Usapau and see if all of these old glitches are still available. I'm just so looking forward to it. So yeah, after in one way or another timing out and going to the results screen and seeing the please buy our game screens, you know, that was it. That was all that these demos have and I got years and years of enjoyment out of them. But like I said, my Xbox did eventually give up and I could no longer play them. But they still just stuck in my head and once I was on the internet and able to search whatever I could on YouTube, I just looked back on the entirety of the original Star Wars Battlefront games and just saw all that I was missing. Like at this point I have more memories of watching Battlefront 2 videos than actually playing the demos. It's sort of weird how nostalgia works out that way but I'm glad it does. It would have been nicer if I had memories of playing the full game before now but like I said I never got the chance to get the full game on Xbox. I've never had a laptop powerful enough to play full Steam games. I've never been bothered with piracy so I've just never had the opportunity until this classic collection got announced. And to be fair, I do think that missing all of these opportunities was worth it in the end, just because of how ridiculously excited I got seeing the trailer announced in that Nintendo Direct. Like, just put yourself in my shoes, you know, I've thought about this game for nearly 20 years and I've constantly watched YouTube videos about it, like, just last month I was having one of my binges. And throughout the Switch's life there's been a constant supply of older Star Wars games getting remastered or ported and even though Battlefront 2 2017 was having its life cycle I always thought there was just a chance that we'd get something like the classic collection. But that was just at the back of my head you know I never went into a direct actually expecting it to be announced you know. I was too busy hoping for even more farcical things like for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to get DLC or something stupid like that. So to be watching just another partner showcase direct, you know, skipping through all the trailers that I don't really care about while making sure that I don't spoil the next announcement and then some poxy thing about Unite and Fight comes up, you know, Star Wars is the last thing coming to mind at that moment. But then as the trailer started, I was just like, wait, do I know that game? Oh my god! You know what I mean? You just can't beat the feeling of two decades worth of hoping and wishing actually paying off. Like, even if I don't end up really getting into the games, like, I'm not really the biggest shooter person, but I'm always willing to give them a try. And I'll still just be so thankful that this collection is actually a real thing you know so yeah that's why i wanted to talk about this you know just to try and convey how much this collection means to me i was planning on talking about these demos sometime but i obviously never thought i'd have an actually topical reason to talk about them so i thought i'd just take this chance but yeah if you have any questions or concerns do let me know just now that we've gotten this part of my old Xbox collection brought up to the modern day, I feel like I can be really hopeful for a classic Project Gotham Racing collection now. 
So let's just start all crossing our fingers for that. Uh, but bye bye. Have a nice day.